Before I introduce our special guest tonight, I want to make sure you know Brooke Wilkinson. She's our executive editor at wendyperrin.com. Um, she's not only a great editor and journalist, but she also answers dozens of your travel questions every day. Brooke, please say hi to everybody. Hello, everyone. Thank you for spending your Friday evening with us. I'm particularly excited about tonight's uh, chat with Tim, my favorite <laughs> photojournalist as well, in addition to Wendy's. Um, you, you probably have a lot of questions. We got a bunch um, submitted beforehand. If you have questions over the course of the next hour, open up the Q&A box in Zoom and drop them in there, and we'll try to ask as many of them of, of Tim as we can in the next hour. Um, also want to let you know that these Zooms have been recorded and we'll be publishing them in articles. Um, stay tuned to our newsletter because that's where we'll let you know about the Zoom recordings. I hope you all get our newsletter. And if you don't, um, it's free. It comes out twice a week and it's where we share our latest intel about the travel world, um, all the information that travelers need to know right now. If you don't get the newsletter already, you can sign up for it at wendyperrin.com on the homepage. Just click on the bottom at the top right of the page that says newsletter. Great. Thank you so much, Brooke. And now, um, so if you go to wendyperrin.com, you will see that there are thousands of traveler reviews there. These are reviews submitted by the travelers who've just come back from trips that they've planned using our WOW trip planning system. And many of these travelers submit photos with their reviews. And we're always very jealous because these are awesome photos from all over the globe, people having an amazing time. But the truth is that many of these photos, they could have been a little bit better if, if the photographer had just like pressed one button or switched one setting or, or you know just lightened it a little bit or done this or that. And so this is why I know that so many people would love to know uh, how to make their photos just that much better when they're using a phone during their travels. So I've asked my favorite photojournalist, Timothy Baker, my other half, and the person who edits all of my photos um, to share with you today his easy tips for taking better travel photos with your phone. Now, let me just also say that Tim is an old time newspaper photojournalist. He has photographed <laughs> everything from the Super Bowl to wars and refugee camps. He's a real action photographer. He has photographed a lot of important events that have happened in this world. Um, he's also a videographer. So take it away, Tim. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Brooke. Thank you, Wendy. Um, it's kind of a secret Kind of an open secret that a lot of professionals use their iPhones these days. And uh, there's so many reasons why. These are such amazing little devices. Now, mine's not on right now because when I turn it on, it messes up the Zoom. So I apologize for my lack of uh, Zoom expertise. Um, but we'll try to um, try to go through a couple of things here. First of all, there's an old saying in photography, the best the best camera you have is the one you have with you. Meaning it doesn't matter who makes it, what size it is, what megapixel it is. If you have it with you, that is the best camera at the time. So don't think that, uh, you know, that you have to have a real fancy camera for things when the iPhone is so good. Uh, several things I really like about it. One, everybody has one. So when you go into a, a, a market scene or something, if I go in with my big Nikons with you know three cameras strip, strapped around me, it does affect the subjects. You go in with this and go bang a bang a bang a, people they're used to it. They don't. It doesn't change their uh, their actions of the day at all. So you're you're actually closer to your subjects if you're doing a human subject. Um, it's a you know it's such a great little a great little device. I do use it. I use it mostly for my wide angle stuff or normal stuff. I do it for foods, uh, piles of rocks, anything that Wendy needs right away, which is almost everything I shoot, which I she needed it before I shot it. So uh, it's just not so uh, cumbersome. Um, where it isn't very good and where you should still consider um, um, a real camera is on if you do sports and wildlife and stuff, which I do. 
And I still use this for sports and wildlife. Now, I hate it when I show somebody a picture on my iPhone of an eagle 100 yards away and they say, oh, did you shoot that with your phone? Um, no, I did not. We still need these big cameras if you're doing sports and action and like I say, um, wildlife. But you have to decide what's your final use for these pictures. Um, mine's, you know, for Windy, it just has to be as big as a, as a, a computer screen. So these phones are perfect for that. If I wanted a billboard, even though Apple shows billboards with iPhones, they've done a little magic. Um, I use my bigger cameras, but here's something we always have with us. First thing I want to tell everybody to do is get all these nice lenses, clean them. Use your shirt, use a cloth. You don't have to get a fancy one, but you know they're sitting around in your pocket, in your handbag. Take it out, clean the lens, just give it a quick buff. And if you're doing selfies, remember your selfie one is on the inside of the camera. So just give it a clean, clean swipe quickly. Um, it's funny because half the people in the world by, 19, by 2050, half the people in the world will be wearing glasses or contacts. And Orbis seems the only, the only company that gets it. And inside their shirts in the little lower, they sew in a cloth for your glasses which I use for my phone. So shout out to Orvis. I use, I've got several of their shirts and you've always got it clean. Now, where that's really important for us anyways, for our family with our redheads, um, we use a lot of sunscreen in the summer. If you put sunscreen on your arm and rub it against your phone, um, your pictures might be a little misty and maybe that's an effect you want to go for, but uh, most of us don't. If that's the case, I use a little wipe like this. Use them on your glasses, your cameras. They come pre-moistened. They come pre-moistened, and like I say, you can use them on your glasses and on your camera, um, especially when you get that sunscreen on your lens. Then just give them a quick wipe. And that'll, that'll improve your picture quality a lot. And it's very quick. Just like I said, just get in the habit when you take it out of your purse, your, your pocket, because it's in there banging around with your keys and it's made of incredibly strong glass. Give it a little wipe. Um, the second thing, when you're, when you're taking your camera on a trip, any place that you're going to be that has water or there's a, a fear of dropping it, I get one of these and this fits underneath, it's a strap and this fits underneath between my case and the camera and it gives me a lanyard. Now, I do not necessarily use the lanyard as my main grip for the camera, but I do use it as a secondary. So I'm up here like this. I was in uh, Florida on Wednesday and I was in an airboat and I didn't have this with me. and you know, you're sit videotaping in the airboat and all of a sudden, whoosh, you know, I mean, you're sitting there holding on to it tight because if it goes, you know, it's gone. So anytime you're around water, um, when we were in Iceland, the boys and I uh, took a trip down inside an extinct volcano. And there was one area where we weren't allowed to stand because they called that the iPhone drop zone where people 400 feet above us were drop, were trying to take pictures and they dropped their phone and and when they, so they had it cordoned off because they get like one iPhone a week. And uh, that might spoil your vacation. Um, those are those are a couple of things that I think are must. If you're going on a cruise, I'd suggest some sort of a some sort of a, um, a strap for your camera. Not necessarily those little things that you put on the back. Those things don't work as well. Uh, they make one that has that holds on to the corners. That's very handy also. So that's, that's, um, that'll save your trip right there. Uh, the other thing that everybody seems to shoot their picture, especially kids, they all shoot them vertically. And anybody, they don't realize they go horizontally. 
And it's funny because as I was looking at cameras from the 20s and 30s, they were all verticals as well. Because you look down, you held them like this and you look down. And it wasn't until the 40s and 50s where we had a camera you could hold with two hands. So unless you're into shoes, uh, have, a, have a look this way, but then come in a little closer, shoot your horizontals. You, it's easier to crop, make a vertical out of a horizontal than a horizontal out of a vertical. But so many of the pictures I see, people have their shoes and you know everything. Zoom with your feet. Take a step in, get a little closer, right? Don't have all that wasted space when you're shooting a group. Um, I believe in looking for a verb in a picture. So I don't necessarily like piles of rocks. Um, I want a verb. So when you look at a picture, say, what's the verb in that picture? Standing, sitting, or pointing aren't action verbs. Um, you know, if if somebody's doing something, even if they, if if they're if they're active, you go to a lot of a lot of the travelers I know go to baking class or cooking classes, and then at the end I always see a picture of them with the chef. Well, take a couple of pictures as they're actually doing it, and it'll give more interest to anybody that sees it. Another tip I have is uh, my personal mantra, because it's digital these days: overshoot, over edit. Let me repeat that. Overshoot, over edit. Now, overshooting because it's digital, go ahead, try different things. Move your camera around, try shooting up, try shooting down, try to, you know, play with the horizontals, play with the verticals. Um, it doesn't cost you anything. You know, I'm from the old days of film where we had 36 exposure rolls that were, you know, six bucks. So when you were on a trip overseas, you thought about each each exposure because you know you had a limited amount of film and we had to worry about the x-rays and everything else but with the digital you don't and this is true with the camera with iphones with any kind of camera um any kind of camera that you use if you do overshoot over edit i mean don't show anybody <laughs> don't don't show anybody your bad ones if you take 100 pictures and you show people five, they're going to think you are one great photographer. And that's what I do. I just shoot and I edit and brutally edit. Don't say, well, this one or that one. Go ahead. Make make tough choices. People don't do that anymore with their cameras, their, with their pictures. Um, they just send them all and say, here, you figure it out. You know, um, make making tough choices is uh, is editing is key to having people think you're really, really good. Um, Photography is about light. And I'm gonna start, I'm gonna give you one of my best tips early here in this discussion. And I hope it's the discussion. I look forward to questions. Um, let me see if I don't wanna, I don't wanna risk it on this thing here, but I, I know we've had several questions on exposure. Um, you know, when you get the sun behind you, you got this beautiful sunset in Tahiti. We, in fact, that was the one of the pictures we used on the, uh, on the promotion for a while week gorgeous sunset and people were taking pictures you know of oh get me us with the sunset well the light's coming from behind them so naturally they're going to be silhouetted now there is a way around it let's see if i can do this without yeah i'm a little worried uh wendy maybe i do want your your uh camera can you go off video first and then yeah can you run that down because i'm afraid i'm afraid that when, that when i've been doing this uh when i every time i use my phone it takes over my uh it takes over my zoom so bear with us here thank you wendy just brought me her phone from her palatial office upstairs so when you take a picture you'll notice that there okay you can go up <laughs> see if i can do this i can see my background and everything you see that let's see here uh, well Let's try it this way. See if we can make this work. Now, I apologize. Um, there's a little yellow, little yellow box, and if you hit that, that'll be your focus point. And you see that little, that little light next to it, the little sunlight. Brooke, can you see that? Okay, can you see that a little bit? Well, if you've got your phone in front Clearly. of you, Brooke, here's what I yeah. want you to do: wake it up and pretend like you're taking a picture somewhere. 
Mm -hmm. And you should see a little yellow box show up. You see the little yellow box? Put your finger on the screen. No. Just okay. Put just okay. tap the screen. Do the little, and on the side of it, there's a little sun. Yeah. Yeah. You can adjust the light. You can make it darker or lighter. Now, for backlit subjects, you make your you add exposure, right? And so what that does is it makes the makes the face lighter or the people in the so that are silhouette makes them less silhouetted. If you make the slider, put it down, it'll make the picture darker. Now we've had questions about how do I make my, my uh, scenic photos look better? That's probably the key right there. Apple, and I'm not sure about the others, I try to be as, as platform agnostic as I can be, but Apple I know has a tendency to make the picture lighter than darker. Now darker is where you get a lot of the richer colors. The lighter, um, like I say, for most things, it, it, it lightens up flesh tones. It lightens up the people. If you open that up, meaning make it lighter, that'll be better for the faces. But if you're taking a scenic photo, move it down and make the picture darker. Try that one. And you can make the whole image a little darker. And now for those grand panoramas, that'll help a lot. You can take it down to about minus one. Uh, I think I think you'll find experiment with that, and uh, I I rarely take uh, I rarely take a picture, a scenic picture, without knocking that exposure down to minus seven at least, because it just makes the colors richer, mm -hmm. and they're not so washed out. But the other thing that we do. Here's a little tip that I've never seen anybody else do. And I do it all the time because when I'm around people, I'll see people making this mistake. You know, there'll be a sunset and they'll be taking pictures. I say, OK, give me your give me your camera so I don't have to deal with, you know, texting it to people. I take their I take their camera or my camera and use it as a light. To light up my subjects. So instead of the. So now I've got the, this beautiful sunset coming in from behind the people, but here's light on their faces. So they're not just a silhouette. And that is, that is huge. I have several different kinds, but this seems to be the fastest and easiest for me. Like I say, everybody's got, say, could you take a picture of us like here? I was, sure, give me your camera. Then I take mine and I use the flash on it. I use, because flash is horrible. We all know that. Flash on these cameras is really bad. But use the other light. Now, for some reason, if you can't use another light, they make all kinds of different lights. And I use them all. There's a little soft light. instead, of, So your light won't be so directional. They make several different little ring lights. Or a little disc, this little hockey puck light. And I could move that around, and like I say, it can fill in the fill in the gaps. The other thing is, it gives a highlight to the eyes. So if you're taking a picture with the indoors, this will give a nice bright little highlight, and that's really important when you're shooting, right? You want to give that makes the people seem come alive. Um, these things, these items I was showing you, are excellent for food photos. We get a lot of food photos. Um, and if you just take the picture, and again, I'm sorry, I don't have the, uh, I'm afraid my phone, I'm, I, I can't show you examples that I'd planned to. And uh, maybe next time, by next year, we'll get it all figured out where I can actually show you pictures. Because I don't believe photographers, if they don't show you their pictures, something's not right. So I apologize again. Um, but for food photos, if you use the flashlight on your, on your foods that you're shooting, it's amazing how the difference you're not um, you're not looking at the fancy restaurant. You know, their 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 soft candle lighting is wonderful ambiance, but it stinks for photos of the food. And what I want you to do with your food photos, if you've, you've got um, if you're using somebody else's camera for the light is move it around and experiment. Shoot some backlit, shoot some frontlit. Um, 
like I say, I've got this one's a battery powered one. This is this one's a USB. And this one came from a place called Rolling Square. And so what I do is when I'm looking at my foods, I'll move it around. And the closer the light, the closer the light is to the subject, the softer the light will be, will appear. The farther away, the more it'll look like a flashlight and be a brighter, uh, more focused light. Um, this, you, you will you will see a humongous difference with your, um, with your, uh, the food pictures. Tim, a listener, when you are asking, do you recommend a particular brand of those small lights? You mentioned, was it Rolling Square? Uh, yeah, this one's called a Rolling Square Edge. Okay. And I like it for, it, 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 you can click the brightness. It's, it's USB powered, but it also has different, um, different color of light. I don't know if you can see it very well, but it's got a very bright and it's got a more of a warmer tone for people. And when we were at the when we were at the Wendy's conference up in Oslo, I used this as a flash. So I carried my camera and carried this and just went like this and used it for a flash. And what a difference it makes! Like I said, it gives you the catch light in the eyes. People don't blink because they know the flash is coming, and it's not that obtrusive. So these things are very handy. I think that was forty dollars. Um, but I've even I've even used, you know, this work light I have, you know, battery powered and and uh, anything to give your food some highlights and some shine and some better color. Oh, sorry, the flashing. So, yeah, that that to me, this I think if you take anything out of tonight, two things, clean that lens and for your food shots or for people shots. Borrow the other camera, borrow the other phone, and use that as a light source to help fill in the fill in the gaps. Um, now I get asked, when do I shoot video? When do I shoot stills? If there's music or once in a lifetime action, you know your spouse is running with the bulls, and you've got a spot in uh, Pamplona, and you know they're going to go by in a heartbeat, and they're going to he's going to be in a he or she's going to be in a crowd and they're going to be not stopping for photos. I can guarantee you. Um, if you video, let's see if I can get Wendy's to turn on here. Once you put it in the video mode, let's see here. Wendy, where's your video? There we go. Once we put it into video mode and once we start the video, if you notice, see that white button up top there? Mm -hmm. This little white button? That's actually a shutter button, and that will take a still while you're videotaping. So that's a real handy thing to know, because that'll give you a still right there. Just boom, boom, boom. Also, what you could do is once you have your video and you play it back, you can frame grab it, just do a screen grab, and use that as a still. And that's, again, that's very, it's, it's good enough quality if you're, Texting it to you know around to your family uh, family group or you know using it online, um, but anytime like I say music or real action is coming, you can use the for if you're just going to shoot stills you can use the burst mode, which is up here on this camera on the on the iPhone I'm not sure where it is on the Googles and stuff but um, just here and they're all about the same about ten frames a second which is pretty amazing considering that in the early days of photography of, you know, motor drive and 35 millimeters, three and a half, four frames per second was pretty darn good. And now here we get 10, 10 frames a second just by holding this down. Now, one of the drawbacks of that, you're going to fill up your card, you're going to fill up your, your, your phone on the, the space because now instead of one picture, you've got 10. So if you do that, Fairly soon after, go in, edit them out, pick your favorite, one or two, put a favorite mark, and then throw the others out. Because otherwise, you're just going to be filling it up. Um, and I'm I'm bad about that. Believe me, I'm bad about not housekeeping. I have a hard time housekeeping with the phone as opposed to with my, uh, my big cameras. Um, but that, to me, is, is huge. Um, you know, there's there's the rule of thirds. Maybe you've heard of that. I mean, it's it basically you're taking your frame 
and you're cutting it into third. Uh, this thing's backwards from what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm gonna have a hard time. Third, third, no. third, 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 and then again, third, third, third. And where those points intersect, let's see if I can, <laughs> where those points intersect, ooh, that was, was, this is really hard because it's backwards. It's like looking through a twin lens reflex. Where those things are, in, are considered the four points of interest. And basically all the rule of thirds does is it says, don't put your subject square in the middle. That's kind of a no-no. You know, don't put the horizon line, don't put the horizon line right at the eye level. Put the horizon line either above it or below it. You know, you get that classic sunset. Don't put the sun right in the middle. Give it one side or the other. Um, that also goes with keep the camera moving, right? Take a picture, experiment, move it around. Pe you know, these cameras will shoot upside down. They'll shoot right side up. They'll shoot, you know, straight down. Um, they're, they're, they're amazing. And it's not costing you anything. It doesn't work. Yep. Throw it, throw it out. Um, when we see pictures, when we see pictures of on a on a billboard for Mac taken taken with the iPhone Pro, it was a you know this thing over Umbria or something. This beautiful sunrise and beautiful colors and everything. Uh, that wasn't as shot. It was as shot with the phone, but it had it's had a little uh, help, shall we say, in post processing. Um, and I think. Once you've taken the picture, you're not done either. Have a look at it. Go ahead and open the picture up. There's a button. Once you've got your, your pictures, there's a button. Um, let's see, I got, got some ugly pictures. Let's find it. Let's find a. Let me find a, one of Wendy's pictures here. Well, she'll not like that one. So, okay. So there's Wendy and Macy. And if you notice up top here, this sign says edit, hit that. And you're gonna get several choices of things to do here. You've got auto, you've got adjust down, uh, there it is. <laughs> you've got adjust down here. You've got um, filters. Now I rarely use the filters, but some people do. And you can see the, the different filters that are available here. So your pictures can give these different looks. I mean, I wouldn't use, I don't use, I don't prefer anything other than the black and white of it. But here on adjust, here's where you're able to do some good. You can hit it on auto here. <laughs> Sorry, hit auto and it'll make some changes. But then you go, you, as you go down, you got, you've got exposure, you've got contrast, you've got white balance, you've got all kinds of sliders you can experiment with. Uh, the way the camera takes the picture is just the beginning. If you, you know, for, so you can go into any of these and play with them. The only thing that I want to warn you about, um, saturation. Saturation, oh, you see it all the time. People just go wild with saturation. And it's just, to me, it looks it looks so phony. Yeah, you can really just add more color and, and it's just, we see it all the time. Um, Brooke, I know you see it too when you look at the pictures that we get from the stock agencies with, with uh, travel pictures, especially. They're just, you know, they're phony. They've just been worked within an inch of their life. And to me, I don't like that stuff at all. I really, I mean, I'm, we don't want phony. We always go for authentic, you know? And you can give it a little a little help along the way. And I'll show you one way that I always do every picture that Wendy gives me, um, or I do myself. Vignette is at the very last of these buttons here. Now, I know it's on the other phones as well. So again, for your uh, uh, Google and, uh, and uh, other users, Android. Samsung. Hmm? Android. Androids, yeah. I, but the vignette is one of my favorite features because in the old photo days, we used to always darken the edges and you can see that there. And it, what it does is it concentrates your eye more on the, on the subject and it makes your pictures give it a little, little pop. So that's, that's one of my favorites. Um, another one, warmth and stuff. That's, that's to taste. 
warm it in. Now, what's so wonderful about this is that if you go done up top there, okay, and here's your picture, you go back to edit and you can go to revert to original. That's huge. We couldn't do that in the old days. Once you did something, you were stuck with it. But revert to the original lets you experiment and still have that picture handy. Uh, let's see here. Tim, oh. we've got so many. We've got so many questions. I think we should probably get to some of these questions. Okay. Oh, yeah. No, I'm happy for. I love the questions. Okay. Let them, awesome. let them lead me. I've 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 got one here because I I want to find this out. Kathy is asking, who makes the lanyard? Oh, you just go on and look for look for iPhone lanyards. There's there's 50 of them. And this these were like seven dollars for this little plastic strip that fits in. And it, it really we had it in Tahiti. Uh, we had it in New Zealand, you know, when, when we were out and being active. But that's a, that's an easy Google. But also you what you've gotten for me is those like a plastic, like a clear plastic case that you put the iPhone in so that if you drop it off the speedboat or into the water, it won't get destroyed. Yeah, exactly. And I, I went to B&H today and they were out of them and I can't find ours. But um, yeah, it's all it is, is a, is, a, um, is a baggie, basically. And you put the whole thing in there. And it's also very good for snorkeling. You know, it will take that down to, you know, five, six feet and you won't get any water in your camera. Um, I just think, you know, how so sometimes you're, you know, you're you're at the top of a tower and or or you're like leaning over the side of a building with your with your phone and you could so easily drop it. And that's why I just think it's a great idea to like if you have it around your neck. Right. And then you can like lean over the side of the building or the boat or whatever. Yeah. Take the photo. But then at least you're not going to lose your phone. Yeah. When I was in when I was in Bosnia, I had to have my phone at all times. So if I had gotten in any trouble, I could, you know, call um, the U.S. military because I was working for them, which, you know, helped that most photojournalists don't get to do, which was kind of cool. Um, but I had mine on a lanyard around my neck the entire time and, you know, had my pens hanging off of that. And uh, no, you're right. Lanyards are great, especially if you've got kids and they're traveling with air phones. You know, and and you're bouncing around in a brook. You've done this bouncing the in the around in the back of a safari van, you know. And it's, you know, oh look at that! And I was, you know, things happen. And that's a. Uh, they also make little. Uh, this one for the six seven dollars. They also make a little wrist strap, which I thought was a very good very good for me, in that you know that way you don't have all this extra. Uh, but you can you know you can cut that off. You can do all kinds of stuff. But yeah, just this little thing. And like I say, I really like the ones that hold all four corners, but then you get into phone problem, you know, get into all these lenses problems. So I, I really like this. It just slips behind my my case. And uh, like I say, I, I'm not going to swing it around my neck, but. but well, speaking uh, of gear, Molly asked, do you recommend a lens cover to minimize the smudging and debris? No, no, no. no. You want to make this as easy as possible. Um, you want to be able to shoot right away. You know, uh, you want to be able to anticipate action and anticipate what's going to happen. That's when you take the picture. You anticipate what's going to happen. You know, you've got the you got the sommelier with the saber off the, you know, off the court. First of all, I'd shoot that in video, but you you got to start shooting before it happens. Yeah. You know, you see these pictures of uh, football with the. The receivers, you know, the ball is like right here, two inches away from the receiver. Well, you can't wait till he catches it and starts running. You have to shoot before he catches it. What that means is there's a lot of photos out there of misses. <laughs> you know, it's not unusual for a photographer to shoot two, three thousand photos in a football game, attempting to get that picture, of that ball just dropping right into the hands, you know. We have a question from one of our very own WOW listeners listening tonight, Ali Almario. Um, hi, Ali. She's asking, hi, Ali. I'd love to hear the answer to as well. Any suggestions for reducing wind noise and recording a video on a phone? Yeah. Um, if you if you look and see, like a lot of photographers, a lot of videographers will have these. Um, oh, they some people call them bunnies. They call them. Uh, lambs they call them you know the big furry balls that you see these guys have yeah and that is and that is to re reduce the wind noise 
Now these little mics that people have um, have this little sock, this little foam rubber sock on it. This this is the actual microphone. This is just a sock to keep down the wind. Now I have seen people that have taken things similar to this and on an iPhone, there's actually four microphones on it, but most of them are here, right here. There's two microphones here. I've seen them cut a hole down, a slot down here and place that over there to help with the wind noise. Um, one guy I saw uses grandma's uh, hair curlers. He goes to the dollar store and it is bright pink, <laughs> but it does help with the wind noise. Um, if it's some of the workarounds people use though, they'll, they'll uh, add music over the top of it. You know, and like the other day, I, I wanted the wind noise because we were, we were, you know, in Florida, it was like we had 35 mile an hour winds and it was horrible. And I wanted to show that. So I wanted the wind noise. Mm -hmm. But yeah, there's you can you can do some of it in the after in the post. You know, after you've got the video, there's programs that you can get that will lessen it. But but if you can try that, try the the uh, pink hair. <laughs> you know, pink foam hair curler, you know, cut it and just set it there. And it's, it, it surprisingly, it sure helps. Might be a little in, in glamorous, but it's, uh, it does help. Creative solution. Uh, another listener asked, what is the AE slash AF lock? That's for autofocus, auto exposure. If you hold it down, It'll pick a focus point and it'll lock the focus point and it will lock the exposure. Now, where you would use that, um, the focus lock I use a lot, especially for foods. If you point it down at your food and you want to get the front of the, of the cherry cheesecake, you want that sharp. Just put your finger right on there, lock it in, press and hold that, that yellow dot, that yellow square, and that'll lock the focus at that don't move because it's already locked. It's going to be locked at one foot or 14 and a half inches or something. Um, and you can take the picture from there or you can move it around and take something else at 14 and a half inches. It also locks the exposure. Let's say that you, you know that the camera is giving too much light and you're saying, no, I don't want it to give it that much light. So you lock in, you turn it to a dark or a lighter subject, press your, press your auto, auto exposure lock and it'll keep that same exposure throughout several pictures mm. yeah it, that one's that one's a little i don't know if, if you're bite not not everybody ready for that i'd sure like everybody to experiment with that that yellow box will come in very handy and that slider that exposure slider especially for those outdoor pictures you know with those grand those grand scenes excellent Susan asked, how do we avoid red eye? Which I haven't noticed this much. It used to be a much worse problem than it, than I find with my phone. Well, that's because you don't use flash with your phone anymore because the flash is so bad. That's why. Mm. Red eye, in the old days of the, the let's take a, um, an Instamatic camera that had the little cube on top. Well, the lens is right here and the flash is going in right here. So the flash is going in at the same angle that your lens is. That's actually the picture of the back of your eye reflecting back, the red is. And that's why if you see animals, they'll have a green eye because that's the color of the back of their eyes. So that's where red eye comes from. It comes from the combination of when you use the flash, your eyes, it's usually because it's dark. Well, your eyes, your apertures of your eyes are wider open. And when that flash goes in at the same angle, um, that's when you're gonna get the red eye. If you shoot, you'll see a, a professional like a um, uh, wedding photographer, their camera's here, but their flash is way above them. Because what they're doing is they're sending the shadows down behind the person and bouncing that not off the red in the eye. Does that make sense? And if you're getting, <laughs> if you're getting that red eye with a, you know, when you're taking a photo, what, what can if you do? If you use one of these, you don't get the red eye. You know, and the, like I say, the flash is so bad anyways. And yeah, uh, they also make, I don't know if I've got it. Yeah, this company makes um, an adapter that you can put here and then you can mount it to your camera. 
Now, because this is a less direct, it isn't like that spotlight. It's more the, the softer light. You're not going to get that red eye. You're just going to get that highlight in the eyes. So, yeah, I mean, they're, you know, like I say, you, you throw it in your pocket. You know, if you're going to a like I used it, I used it at the at the summit for all the night shots. I just ran around with this thing rather than the flash or or worse yet, not using a flash, not using a a forward light because we had all that light coming from the top. We had nothing going from the front. Tim, do you use the live feature on your phone? I can't stand the live feature. I don't get it. I'm sorry. I'm not a I'm an old time shooter. I don't I don't understand what it's supposed to do and what the what the advantage is over it or anything. I mean, it seems to me like it's kind of like that taking a video and then shooting, you know, pushing the shutter button and take a video. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, you just have that little bit of it, you know, well, what happened before? What happened after? If it was worth a video, shoot the video. <laughs> yeah, I'm not I'm not a fan of live action because it just kind of, eh, you know, OK, well. I get it. Um, Fair enough. What, when, if I can offer a tip. Um, when you shoot, uh, when you hand your picture to somebody, you hand your hand, sorry, hand your phone to somebody for a group photo. Right. And or you want to be in the picture you hand you can. That's one of the great things, too, about a phone. Anybody can almost everybody knows how to use, a, uh, you know, take a picture from a phone. So it's not like, oh, press this button and look, look through here and, you know, just hold it out. But a little tip is if you put it on self timer. While there and you just say you just hold it, you don't have to do anything. You will get a countdown from here of 10 seconds or three seconds, you can set your, you can set your phone, you'll get a countdown and it'll take a burst of 10 photos without anybody having to do anything. So if you get a blinker or a cough, it's taking 10, it'll give you one second's worth of photos. And then you can go back in and pick from burst. It allows you to pick, keep one, keep two, keep three. But um, that way you don't have, you just, you just hold it up. Another little tip, if if I want a picture of Wendy and I and the boys in front of the Eiffel Tower and I've got it set up where I, I'm working on my rule of thirds, I'm not putting things in the middle, I will take a picture of what I want without me and show the person, this is how I want it. You put the middle right on Charlie, mm -hmm. right? And that way it doesn't come out like this or this or this. You've at least said, no, I don't want to be in the middle. You know, you put this, the middle, right on that guy. See that right there? Yeah. It's just a handier way. But I do like using the self-timer when you hand the photo to somebody else. Because you do get those, you get that 10-second warning, and you get 10 pictures. A burst rather than one. So, you know, if you get a sneeze or you get a car passing by in the background or or something, you've got a, you got a 10 in one chance of getting something good. Now, when you've got a gadget in one hand and the phone in the other, how are you keep keeping the phone steady? Is that just decades of muscle memory or? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of that too, but that is an important thing. Um, when you take a picture, shoot, hold on to it after you've taken the picture as well. Just just give it a little extra time. I see all these people that go up and go, bam, boom. What? <laughs> you know, I mean, the camera's still processing the photo, you know? Take your picture. When you're shooting at low light, hold your elbows in, hold the camera tightly, and take the picture, and then just give it a one count after the picture. It's like the high school track coach used to say, you finish beyond the, the tape, right? You just don't run to the tape, you run through the tape. That was what he told the other guys. I never finished, I never saw a tape, so, but can do that, just the... The other thing, when you're taking pictures in lower light, look for a natural brace of some sort, whether it's the back of a chair, whether it's, you know, just putting your elbows down, whether it's resting it on on something, on a box or something. You know, it, the cameras, especially at night, they do an amazing job, but you have to do, your, you have to help it. Because so much of what the cameras do now is after the fact. It's with the AI, it's with how they blend multiple pictures into one, you don't even know what's going on. But that's that's the advantage over these that 
aren't on a lot of professional digital cameras is the, the amount of AI that goes into these. Yes, Wendy. Tim, Tim, often at night, if, if you know, you'll have me take the phone and like rest it against a lamp post or something, yeah. like have it so that to hold it steady at yeah. night, anything it's going to take longer. Exactly. The, anything yeah. in low light, not necessarily at night, but anything there's, you know, there's all kinds of, all kinds of, there's, you know, trash can, there's just hold it yeah, against like, the wall, hold it against the side of anything, just to give it the side of a building or a anything, traffic light anything, or, anything to anything help it. Steady. Anything to help it, even if you put your elbows in, you know, if you're more comfortable shooting a, a, a vertical when it should be horizontal, eh, maybe, but you know, just, just take that time. If you're out here, you've got more room to move. If you bring your elbows in, bring it close to you, you can use your own forehead. You know, you can, you can use all kinds of stuff that just anything to give it that little bit of brace. I don't say carry a tripod. I hate tripods. I use them when I have to, but you know, they make a lot of little ones, but I don't, I don't, I think the less encumbered you are with stuff, like I say, I'm already trying to encumber you with a little, you know, puck light and a, and a strap. Uh, I think the better. What about a gimbal? Do you carry a gimbal? I don't video? carry a gimbal. Um, the iPhone in movie does a really nice job in uh, a, not perfect, but a really nice job. I wanted to, I wanted to share something that, uh, I've seen people do with with um, uh, pans, whether they're using pano or video, they'll start here and they'll go like this and they'll try not to move their feet. And then by the time they get to the other end, look, their body is like contorted. If you start your pan with a more neutral setting, and I don't have my Arthur Murray numbered feet here, sorry, but start with here, and then as you come through slow and smooth, you're not being so contorted. Mm. Um, I love using Pano. And here's a little here's a little tip people don't realize. Use a Pano for uh, verticals as well. If you're in a cathedral, that's kind of fun. It's not perfect. We were in the Redwoods last month, you know, and the Redwoods, that was a great way to just the Pano in the Redwoods. Yeah. Tim, tell them about the panoramic shot that the helicopter pilot took in New Zealand. <laughs> well, she had me on one end of a group photo, and she says, "Now I'm going to take a picture. I'm going to, as I pan, when after you see me get to a certain point, run around behind me." And so, and while I ran around behind her to get in the rest of the group with the with Wendy and the kids, I threw my shirt off. And so by the time she panned, I'm actually standing in two places at once. And so many people thought that I didn't know we had a twin. <laughs> <laughs> Just a fun Can't thing. Believe to anything do. you see these. Yeah, days. exactly. Exactly. Jeff asks, any suggestions on taking a picture through a window and avoiding the reflection? Yes. Um, first of all, if you've got, if you uh, clean the window for starters, if you can, I've used my, my, uh, shirt sleeve a lot to clean windows if you've got any kind of these little uh you know a cloth or one of your things clean inside and if you're with you know all the guys that we've had they they're they take great pride in their cars but i've had to go out and clean the outside of their window if i knew i'm shooting through glass which i hate to do by the way i hate shooting from a moving vehicle i'll do it but i hate it um get your camera really close to the lens Right, really close to the glass. That way it won't tend to focus on the glass. Sometimes you try to take a picture and it's focused on an imperfection in the glass. So if you get your camera, you get your phone really close, it won't, uh, it'll, you got a better chance of shooting through the glass. So clean the glass and get it closer to the glass so you're shooting through it. Another tip that I use, uh, that I used when I was Flying down to Florida on Monday, uh, the sunrise over in New York City from Newark was really pretty. But I had a lot of reflection from the windows inside the inside the the terminal. So I used my um, used my my um, jacket as like the old photographers used to do in the 1900s, the cloth, the focusing cloth. I used that. I covered up everything but the lens and the surrounding area. 
So I had no reflection coming back from that glass. So I could shoot through the glass without any uh, without any shadows. So that I, I do that a lot. Throw a sweater over me or something. <laughs> See, Wendy knows she's seen. What's he doing? Why is he doing that? He does weird... this all the time. Yeah, <laughs> I do use that, Jeff. So I, I feel for you. But if you can clean the glass too, that helps. Um, Tim, you mentioned you know overshooting and then over editing and and marking your your favorite shots as favorite. Molly's asking, how do you put a favorite mark on a photo? Uh, with the iPhone, let me show Wendy's here. They have a little heart. I'm not sure what the Android's doing. Again, apologies. Let's see what I can find in Wendy's here. It's not giving me. So, well, here's an example you can just, where you can just favorite it by just there's a heart at the bottom. Yeah, and you see just that little heart that, right here. Favorite it. See that little heart. You can favor that and and just remind you as you're going through. One thing I hate to do is do too much editing on the phone because the, the screen's only this big, even if you turn it this way. It's very small. So you got to look at each picture to make sure nobody's blinking or anything. I wait. I like to wait till I get home and then get it in front of a bigger screen. You know, go to um, uh, uh, go to your uh, what do they call it when you pay your nine dollars to Apple to make the cloud and edit from the cloud. That way you can get your your pictures are bigger. I don't like to edit because I'm afraid I'm going to throw something out that I shouldn't have from the small screen where let me look on the big picture. And okay. and I'm the wrong one to ask because right now I have thirty one thousand still photos on my phone so <laughs> time to take your own advice <laughs> yeah exactly exactly um duncan's wondering if you can recommend a robust power pack for an iphone for going on a trek with no access to a power source for up to a week or more Ooh, ooh, boy i don't know i mean they i've seen it i we did i did have a um a little solar collector that was just enough for an iphone um, geez, I, I, that'd be the only way you could do it. I don't see how you could be gone for a week or more. Um, I would have, if you're going to use iPhones, what, one thing I, I, we don't trade in our phones as a rule, um, like to keep them just in case. And, it, you know, so if you're going on a long trip like that, uh, maybe, maybe you consider getting a Samsung that, or one of those that has, um, you know, replaceable batteries. You know, that's one of the drawbacks of the iPhone. When you're out, you're out. They make little mini power banks, but like I say, I, you would have to find a solar powered one. Well, I mean, and if you're on a trek and you're you're not needing your phone for the purpose of a phone, if you turn off your cell data and your, your Wi-Fi an airplane the battery, if, the battery will you, last. Yeah, if you put it in airplane mode, it'll last a while. But if you're shooting a fair amount of videos and a lot of stills in a given day, you're still, um, you know, if it depends how old your phone is too, maybe that's the time you go get it, get it replaced, get the battery replaced. You know, if your phone's more than a year old, that battery's got a limited time and maybe you pay the 90 bucks or whatever it is, or a hundred bucks and get the battery replaced. So at least you've got a better chance. Yeah. And a couple other listeners are su suggesting an anchor battery and solar backup and just bring in yeah. a couple of, it depends how much weight you want to carry. You yeah, know? exactly. I mean, those, those solar batteries are heavy. Um, Joanne asked about multi-shoot mode, whether you use it, um, and, and you I mentioned earlier, Tim, that, that you do use that. Uh, oh, you mean the burst mode, that kind of thing? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Sports. I mean, you know, if, if even with my big camera, I'm shooting 20 frames a second, you know, and anticipating and everything. Um, yeah, I, it depends on the event. You know? Joanne also is wondering about, she says, I get that green dot in strong light. How do you get rid of that? Do you know what she's talking about? Dot in strong light. No, I don't. I apologize. Um, but one thing, to, one thing that's important to know, too, if you're outside in bright light, um, make your uh, screen brighter. Yeah, it will, it will lessen your battery power, but that's the only way you're being able to see, you know, Wendy sent me a couple of pictures says, could you edit these? And I'm literally out shooting Ospreys in the middle, you know, on the beach and it was very bright and I could hardly see my screen. That wasn't the time to edit, right. you know? Uh, oh, and one other thing when you're next time you go to a, uh, 
a big box store, um, when you come to your editing part of it, don't do so much because if you look every screen slightly different, so you might be doing it looking perfectly here, but then if you're going to send it to everybody else on their phones, it'll look darker or lighter. So, you know, be careful on those sliders and how much you move and play with it to make it look great on your phone. Uh, next time you're at a bowling alley, notice the different colors of all the, of all the, um, video monitors on top for your scores they're all they go from dark to gray to green to everything and i was at bnh had a whole wall of pick of tvs today and every one slightly different than the other so to what standard are you going to edit to we're getting some responses from the audience that may solve that mystery of the green dot. Um, it sounds like it. people are saying it shows up when you're shooting into the sun, it's glare, people have got it when they shoot a full moon. So maybe it's overexposure or something like that. If you're including a, a pinpoint light source, it might just be a refraction because when the when it bounces, when that light bounces around through the little lenses that are in there, um, you will you might get a bit of a halo or a, uh, but like I say, that usually comes from a, a, a pointed light source. Um, I guess the, the live photo option is, is a love it or hate it. We've got a couple of people wondering how to turn it off permanently. How do you do that on your phone? Um, go under your settings. And uh, in fact, well, you'll see it on top. I just make sure it's off because it bugs me so much. Let me see here on Wendy's. Um, <laughs> So here it is here. Here's the little, uh, there's a little live button up there. And if it's got the, the cross through it, that means it's off. So there, now it's on and just give it a poke. And now the little lines through it and it shows that it is off and not working anymore. But while, I you've got that that phone, while you've huh? got that phone up there, keep it up there. Cause Diane's yeah. asking, where is the self timer feature? Okay. You might see if you, uh, on the iPhone, you got that little arrow that goes up there. Let's press that arrow. And now you see it goes down and it offers more features here at the bottom, uh, which one is the self timer, which is at the end here. You'll press that. Uh, this is hard because I'm working backwards, see? No, that was the exposure. That's another way you can do the exposure. Uh, let's see here. Let's get out of that and go back. Yet there's the self. <laughs> it's funny when I turn it that way, for some reason it disappears. There it is. There's the self timer right there. Did you see it? And it gives you your choice timer, timer off three seconds or 10 seconds. Uh, I like the 10, it lets everybody get settled. Three, you know. <laughs> my, my husband taught me to use the timer on selfies because which I hate he's usually my photographer and he's one he's right. not he does a good job Brian's right? got some good photos <laughs> thank you and, oh, he and does a very good job. To, it's hard for me to hold the camera yeah and click the shutter with a selfie so if you use the timer then you can yeah, yeah I have a up. problem because I've got I've got long fingers and to hold out my phone you know, like this then to find that button is pretty hard you know you can do it from here but um but yeah I like the self timer I like the self timer well, way to do it. We're we're at uh, seven fifty nine. We got a few more questions. If you can stick around a little yeah, bit, yeah, good. Um, okay, Ellen also wants to know what is the icon on the top left next to the flash. Let's see. In low light, in low light, that would be to tell you how long your shutter is going to be. This one right here, it's up there. Yeah. So if you press that, um, let's see here. And low light, well, I'm in bright light now, so it's not going to show. But in, in low light, that'll mean a longer exposure, and it'll sometimes turn yellow, and it'll say like two seconds or three seconds. That's reminding you hold really still because there's not enough light for a, a quick picture. You just can, again, brace, brace on that. Two, three, boom. Um, and Linda's asking if holding a second phone as a flash, it's difficult to take a steady landscape picture with one hand. My finger doesn't easily reach the white button. That could be a situation, right, where you use the timer and then and then you can frame yeah, it up. I have, have that same, I have that same, like I said, I have that same problem, but I, I don't have a problem with, you know, this and this. This is not too much to ask, you know, to keep that second hand here or, or keep it here, you know, like this. 
Can you yeah. ask somebody else to hold the light? Yeah, but you know, you want to, if people take, if you make it too involved, the moment's gone. Yeah. You know, so you want to just, you want to uh, take advantage of the, the fact that you can just shoot it quickly. You know, I like doing that rather than having people wait around. I think that's important. I think if you're taking pictures that, you know, respect your subject's time. If you're asking a fisherman to pose, you know, don't say, oh, well, let me get my camera out and wait a minute here. Let me check the meter. Let me check that. No, give it boom, boom, boom. You be ready and then ask them. If they say yes, then you're ready to go. I've always, get, I've always done that. Yeah, I get such great expressions on people. Your portraits are really, really captured. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. but you got to be ready, you know. Don't don't respect their time. Yeah. Um, Anita's wondering if you have any pointers for taking pictures or videos from an airplane. I do it all the time. Um, how, like, at two thousand feet or at forty seven thousand feet, you know, uh, shoot it for sure. One thing about that I didn't talk about is these cameras, um, in the phones. On um, this older phone of Wendy's, you've got. Uh, a wide angle, super wide angle, a one times and a three times. If you go any higher than the three times, it if you try to zoom past that or you can, you can go, you know, way beyond that. And I can go up to 15 times. But what's happening is the camera is 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 cropping the pixels so the picture won't be as good. That's called a digital zoom and it's not as good as an optical zoom. So when you're at 47,000 feet and you're at 42,000 and you're shooting down at, oh, I see my house from here, you know, <laughs> maybe you're not going to be able to see it really that well because I've, I've done it. Yeah. But I, I love shooting. I love shooting stuff. I'm always looking out the window. Mm -hmm. I, and occasionally, you know, you see another plane fly under you or something. And, and yeah, no, I'm, I'm shoot, 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 shoot. <laughs> Randall's wondering if you can talk a little bit about raw files. Do you shoot raw? Mm. And what do you do? Yeah. My pro stuff, all raw. Now, the difference between raw and JPEG or the high H-E-I-C. Um, raw is exactly how the camera sees it. And it allows you to make more changes in post-production. It gives you a much bigger file. Um, the, the regular file is about 14 megapixels. The raw is about 50 megapixels. So you can make a bigger enlargement. You can crop more out of it. Uh, the problem is that will really fill up your, your storage. So that's important to, uh, you know, if you see a picture that you love and you go, oh my God, I'm going to frame that, shoot it in raw also. And there's a setting under camera. You go into settings, camera, and formats, and raw will be one of the choices. And then that raw button will be put on top in your screen and allow you to press that button if you really want it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it'll give far superior pictures and far superior if you're going to uh, do any post-production where you'll import it into a Lightroom or a Photoshop, having that raw image. And I shoot everything in raw, you know, but, uh, uh, but not on my phone. I just use that for special occasion. I'll say, oh, I like this picture. I think this is really good. I'm going to shoot it in raw. Duncan is saying back to airplanes. Duncan is saying pressing against the glass eliminates the glare. Yeah, but you don't want to press against the glass completely because you're going to get some vibration there too from the from the plane. Those minute vibrations. Uh, so be careful doing that. Just you know, back it off maybe just a smidge. And like I say, throw your jacket over it. You know, it's it's not like the scene's going to be unless you're at a thousand feet. That scene's not going to be changing that much. But yeah, that's uh, yeah. And don't do that with car windows either. Don't put your don't put your phone right against it because it's going to take any vibration that the window has. Um, Rebels headed into the Galapagos this summer, and I, my wife's you... already been, so she won't take me there. <laughs> well, if you were headed there, um, where would you go to learn how to buy a better camera for wildlife? They make, I was in B&H today because a friend of mine had one of these. We were shooting some birds in Florida yesterday morning. Um, I had my big long lens and he had this little, what's called a bridge camera. It's not an interchangeable lenses, but they've got incredible zoom range. Um, 
that would be a place to that would be a place to consider one of those kind of cameras. Sony makes them, Canon makes them, Nikon makes them. Um, uh, Panasonic made one that was really good. I like theirs, and it uses an optical zoom, so it's not a not a uh, digital uh, computer guess at what the zoom should be. Uh, if you were going on a safari, if somebody was going on a safari and they wanted pictures of the animals, I would get one of those cameras. They they go anywhere from six hundred to I think I saw one for sixteen hundred. So um, that would be something to consider if if the animals are really important to you, because you're not going to do that with your phone. When I go on safari, I've got my super long lens, I've got a medium long lens, and I use my phone for the wide angles. I don't use it for the because I love the really wide, the the super wide, the point five on the Apple. I like that really wide look. Uh, I, can I just say one thing that you didn't that you I don't think you mentioned Tim, but having to do with video because I think it's a really great tip. Um, whenever there's music, like you know when we were in Uzbekistan and there were these bands in the restaurant and on the street, and when there's this really exotic and interesting music, video like even if there's nothing to video, just turn it on and record the music. Yeah, I use it as a tape recorder. I use it as a tape recorder. So if I exactly. did, put a, I put a show together. If I put a show together later of, of my pictures, I'll use that as the background music. You can separate it out. Yeah, I just let the. I just you know I'll set it up, set the camera on the desk with a with a Coke bottle up behind it, and just let it run. You know. And, so that uh, way, if you got too much wind or you know the the sound didn't work out you can put that other sound from that same location in the yeah, background. Yeah, that really adds to the, yeah, really add to your little video program you'd want to do. Awesome. Well, it looks like we made it through all those questions. <laughs> um, well, I'm sitting there looking at a couple here, blah, blah, blah. Oh, um, uh, blah, blah, blah. The phone's any different? No, it's not really it's all evolution not revolution right now with the iphone 14 15 12 18 52 hike you know so they're not they're they're just incrementally getting better but the but the post production and the ai is going to be phenomenal at these someday um love to uh how about pictures of kids uh my friend always says bribe and threaten <laughs> work for her um but it's also like, if they're actually doing something, they're not going to complain. So get them to do something as opposed to, okay, everybody stand in front of this pile of rocks and smile. But if you do that, and it works with adults too, just say, look, I want this picture. It's a, there's this famous pile of rocks and grandma wants to see this picture. So just give me this half second, boom. And uh, that that's my approach to it. But I do like to bribe and threaten. <laughs> Well, okay. Well, I think, I mean, we thank you so much. I think those are all the, the questions now, um, except for the ones that were submitted at, at beforehand, but um, we've made it through all the ones in the Q&A box. So we'll good. let everybody go and enjoy their the rest of their Friday night. Um, well, I think Tim Brooke's got one more question for me. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, was that a, about... Uh a a surprise for this evening well is there recommended sources for iphone camera technique okay yeah so um one of my favorites on that is a guy named scott kelby who is a photography um teacher and he's got a book and i want to share that book i've shared it with several other people i want to share that book with um one of our listeners tonight and i hope he or she's still there but whoever was number 49, um, let us know and I will send them that book. Okay, number 49, 49. on our sign up was Gina Simzak. Okay, so. Gina, I hope you're a Niner fan. <laughs> so we'll get we'll get Gina's uh we'll get Gina's address and I'll, I'd love to send her that book. It's a good book. And Scott Kelby has a lot of where you have to pay seminars where he you watch it on video, but you have to pay a, a substantial fee. So something to consider. Oh, fantastic. Awesome. Well, thank you again, everyone, so much for joining us for Wow Week. Tim, 
Thank you for being our special guest. Enjoyed it. Um, Brooke, thank you for doing an amazing job moderating all of these WOW Week sessions. Um, and we're so glad. Thank you to all of our readers and listeners, viewers, travelers who've joined us. 